Hello, everybody. Great to see all of you. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes because uh, people jump on. Like We just had 10 people jump on. Yay. Um, so type where you're where you're zooming in from. If you're in New York, I hope you're safe with all the rain. Um, and tell me what kind of paper you brought to fold. So we're going to be folding the translucent paper. What kind of translucent paper did you bring? Ooh, Catherine's in Portugal. Blaine, Washington. Hi, Linda. Oregon, England, New Hampshire, Canada. Oh, no, it's going too fast. Philadelphia, Portland, Swedish pattern paper. Ooh, is that like for sewing it sounds like wonderful all right i'm just gonna wait another minute here before i get started hi alex hi everybody i'm just picking out spot picking uh people to say hi to but hi everyone <laughs> helen, helen yes. we're at 90 i don't know if you can that's gonna make a no it's good i did okay. i did get the extra oh good okay sorry Yep. That's what I was hoping. I pay for over a hundred people and often we don't get to a hundred, but it looks like we might break it. We're at 96. <laughs> so it was worth it. Yay. Hey, Deborah. We've got a lot of people from all over the world. Swedish pa pattern paper can be used for mixed media. It's a thin Japanese paper. Nice. Okay. Um, somebody's using Terrasen. It zoomed by me. Oh, Linda. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I know it's raining on the East coast. Everybody stay safe. Uh, it was 32 degrees here this morning, but it's going to warm up. It's going to probably be in the seventies. So we have these wild swings. All right. Let me get started. Welcome to everyone. I'm so glad to see all of you here. And I'm excited to teach you this project. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. I do a little PowerPoint presentation about the paper year, which is now open to new members for registration. Uh, Lori is my tech assistant, and she's dropping just a chunk of links in the chat and uh, the registration information's there, as well as some things that I'll be talking about. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and this meeting is being recorded. You'll get it afterwards. Just a couple things before I share my screen. Um, I'll answer any questions about the paper year as I'm talking about it. If you have any, just please type them into the chat. If you would stay muted, that'd be awesome. We have a big crowd here. We made it 101. Yay. Um, and then we'll be making this pleated paper card. And um, I hope that you'll share images. If you're in my Facebook group, the Paper Studio, you can share there. You can share on Instagram, tag uh, me, Helen Hebert, and the Paper Year. And uh, hopefully we'll have time to do a little show and tell at the end too. And uh, Tamara from Israel, yay. I, I'm loving seeing everybody from all over the place. All right, here I go. I'm gonna share my screen. And again, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat. All right, here we are. I see I forgot to change the slide on the right. This is um, what we just did. I didn't put the new quarter in. I put it everywhere, but I forgot here. Oh, well. Um, so here we go. Okay, and I have this problem often where it's not forwarding. Hang on, let me try three different ways. Okay, the third way works. Um, okay, for those of you who don't know me or don't know all about me, I run a paper making studio high up in Colorado's Rocky Mountains, about two hours up into the mountains from Denver near Vail and Beaver Creek ski resorts. 
I hold an annual retreat and paper making master classes here in the spring and summer. It snows too much in the winter. And here's some creations from uh, my retreat this year. That middle panel, the bricks, that's actually cast paper that was cast on the wall of the auditorium where we were working. I have a theme every year for the retreat and paper panels was the theme this year. And next year we're going to be working with paper and thread. If you'd like to come work with me in person, uh, that will take place here in Colorado next August. And that's one of the links in the chat. You can learn more. So in addition to making art, I have always been fascinated with paper as a material and all of the ways it can be manipulated. So I spend a good deal of time uh, designing unique projects, and I feature these in my how-to books. I'm currently working on a new book about paper weaving, which will come out in 2025. Seems like a long time away, but it'll be here before we know it. And uh, these are just the covers of the other books that I've written that are out in the world. So the paper year, the paper year is a membership program that I started in January of 2021 to inspire members with a new technique and project every month. In addition to gaining skills for working with paper, members become part of our paper loving community. Following are some highlights from the last couple of months, but please note this is a screenshot of some projects from past uh, years. If you join the paper year now, you will gain access to a growing library that is filled with past projects. There are almost three years worth of projects in the library today, along with many other recorded events. So in July, we made pop-up pyramids. On the left, you see a layered version that is made with several sheets of paper. And on the right, you see a variation that I showed at our monthly Zoom meeting that is a, made from a single sheet. We explore a variety of techniques in the paper year, as well as projects that have been invented by me and guest artists. In July, I mean, in August, we explored these paper toys that actually walk down a ramp. They're pretty cool. These are designed by Andrew Dewar, who was the guest artist that month, and he's the author of many paper craft and origami books. Every quarter, I invite a guest artist to design a project, and they also visit us during our monthly Zoom meeting to share more about their work. In September, we are exploring this old Victorian cobweb design. Uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art actually has a collection of cards made with this structure from the 1800s in their prints and drawings department. If you Google Victorian cobweb valentines, you'll be amazed. One of the things I love most about the paper year is seeing the way that members approach projects. Everyone is so unique and it is truly inspirational and motivating to see what others are creating. For me, in addition to members. Every quarter we have a surface design workshop, which is a two hour live online workshop. Our most recent workshop was with Alyssa Solomon, who taught us about repeat pattern design. She has worked in paper and fabric, combining shapes in simple yet unique ways. We share what we're creating every month in the online community forum in Rizuku, which is the teaching platform that I use. So there are two ways to join the paper year. All of this is outlined on the registration page along with a video about the paper year. But in brief, PDF subscribers will receive just that, a PDF with instructions for the monthly project. All in subscribers receive the PDF video instructions and a couple of monthly Zoom meetings. As you can see here, you can pay by the month for either plan. And please note that this is a subscription, so you'll automatically be billed each month, but you can cancel at any time. And if and when you do cancel, you do lose access to the classroom because it's a subscription. 
Here are what the monthly PDFs look like. These are available to download and print out and keep forever. And then this gives you an idea of what a monthly video looks like. As I've said, you will also have access to this wonderful online community where we share our work, provide supportive feedback, and um, share tips and tricks. All in plan members meet on Zoom twice a month. We have often have a special guest at our monthly Zoom, which will either be the guest artist or a paper supplier. Uh, Molly from Rock Paper will be visiting us in December or a surface design workshop instructor. We also have a monthly two-hour open studio Zoom session where you can carve out time to complete the monthly project and we spend time getting to know each other. So here's a peek at what we're doing during the fourth quarter this year, which begins on Monday um, and registration is open now through October 10th. In October, we'll be making this triangle bag, which was designed by Claudia Lee. And Claudia will meet with us on Zoom uh, during the month and show us how to make um, cord these cords. She makes her own handles out of paper or plant material. So that'll be a bonus uh, little project during our monthly Zoom. And she'll also talk about her work. And then in November, we'll explore paper pleating, which we're doing today, but in a different way and a different form. And we'll make these pleated paper wall hangings. We'll have a surface design workshop in November where we'll learn to carve stamps with Julie Fafan Balzer, author of Carve Stamp Play, and an artist who creates graphic, colorful, highly patterned and expressive work. And in December, we'll make this double pamphlet pocketbook featuring a pocket in the center that is connected to the covers. I love exploring what a single sheet of paper can do. So that is one single sheet that migrates through the book. So again, that's my little slideshow. Um, Registration is now open through October 10th. The link is here. It's also in the chat. And um, let me know if you have any questions before I move on. So are there any, Lori? Um, there were two questions in the chat. Um, the first one was, do you send out materials or? Right, uh, no, I do not send materials. I send a materials list two weeks prior to uh, when we start the project so that you can get your materials together. And I, um, you know, I try to introduce new materials, but I try to also make these projects so that you can use what you may have on hand. So it's not like you're having to go buy something every month. And there's a follow-up question. How soon do you, in advance do you receive the materials list? And the person who asked it saw, oh, two weeks, but do you want to just make that clear? <laughs> yes. So the monthly project um, delivers on the first Monday of the month. So we're coming up to that. October 2nd is the first Monday. If it's a holiday, I do it Tuesday. So there are holidays on Monday, like Memorial Day and Labor Day. But um, so two weeks prior, so that October 2nd, two weeks prior to that was September 18th. So the information about what you need to make the project for October was has been there since September 18th. And then it's always two weeks before the next project. Any other questions at this uh, point? There's a, uh, the other question was to reiterate the issue of access after your subscription ends. Um, right. Yeah, so um, you, you join and you have access to everything from the beginning of the paper year. And you can go in and download all of the PDFs. Those are yours forever, as long as you download and save them. Um, but everything else goes away when you cancel your subscription. Um, and I've had people cancel and then come back. So when you come back, everything is there again. So that's how that works. And can you join any time throughout the year? And included with that, what month would joining now start with? October or? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, you can. No, you can't join anytime. You can join four times a year, January, April, October, and uh, I missed one, July. So it's four quarters and you gain immediate access. So the idea is you're, be, you're starting now at the beginning of October. So October would be your first real project where you can attend, assuming you join the all-in plan, you can attend the Zoom meetings in October and all of that, the live stuff, but you receive access to everything that's already in the classroom. And yeah, so you can join monthly four times a year. Now in January, you do have the option to join annually and you get a little bit of a price cut. You get two months free. So if you join now and then you want to switch over, you can do that and you'll save, you'll pay for the whole year at one time. You'll pay $300 instead of 360 and you'll have, you'll be able to, you know, you'll have access for the whole year. Um, are the Zooms recorded and do do they get access and for how long? Yes, the Zooms are all recorded and they are in the classroom forever. So I call this Rizuku. Uh, it's a classroom where everything is. And um, yeah, the recordings don't go away. And I send you, when I post the recording, I send you a note. So it's very, I'm active in there. Um, no, just, yeah. And Helen, is it, am I remembering correctly that the, that the joining period is like the first uh, 15 days of the month or something like that? It's not, it's, a, the, it's, a, it's around 10. So it's today, September 29th through October 10th. Okay. December, January is a little different. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing. It might be open for more like a month because of the holidays and everything. So December 15th to January 15th, somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all the questions. Oh, there was a question about being not inside the US that access to materials can be challenging. Okay, well, I have several members who uh, uh, seem to be able to get materials and we can talk about that in the classroom. Um, there's been in Europe, I know, uh, people have shared different stores where they, they can buy paper either online or in person in different countries. Uh, I'm not so sure about other countries, but, um, I'm happy to sort of help with sourcing, but I can't send out uh, materials to everyone. That's way too much for me. Okay. Um, Okay, one one last comment. Um, Heather says, I did the PD, PDF subscription, but I'd like to know if I can still join to be able to access the special guest and video demos. So you'd I, have to switch. You'd have to email me and I can, I can walk you through how to switch. You have to cancel the PDF and join the all in. If you're just interested in one, it doesn't really work that way. You can do that. I mean, you can, you know, like you can sign up for, uh, I don't know, whatever you sign up for and quit, you know, and sign up again when you see something coming up. Uh, it's, I'm, it's designed to be continuous. Um, so I can't quite tell from your question what you're asking, but um, you can switch plans. Absolutely. But the sign up is only during the special sign yes. up. Date. So if you cancel, if you cancel and change your subscription and then you go, oh, I don't want to pay that full amount, you can't have access until there's another sign up period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. I mean, I have made exceptions. Uh, if you email me, I can give you a link where you can sign up at another time. So don't want to be exclusive, but it's easier for me to just do these windows. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All and right. I still have my slides up because I want to show you two slides before we start the project. So this is what we're making. It's not going to look exactly like this. We might do variations, which I love. Um, so I started folding this summer in preparation for my retreat. And I was folding like this. So this is a project in my book, The Art of Papercraft, 
which was contributed by Steph Rue. This is a Korean tradition. A Korean tradition is, is bojagi, and um, it's done in fabric. It's a patchworking technique, but she adapted it to paper. And so all of these horizontal lines you see are one sheet of paper and they're just pleated. And it's really, there's a lot of really interesting small nuances about this paper pleating. So I've been playing with it and that's what we're going to do today. So I wanted to turn you on to Steph Rue and to let you know if you have my book, The Art of Papercraft, this is one of the projects you can make this uh, Bojagi curtain. And then I've been following this guy, Goran Konjavod. I don't know how to say it exactly from, uh, he's on Instagram at Foldsome. And for the past several years, he does this 50 day challenge where he's folding. Those are 50 vessels and they're small. I bought one this year. It's about six inches tall um, from a single sheet of paper and he's using pleating. So it was really fun. I was doing the pleating for the Bojagi and then he was working on this and I noticed it and he's putting curves in and all kinds of things. So he's really worth following. Um, he doesn't just do this 50 day project. He posts quite a bit on Instagram uh, aside from that. Okay. So now let me stop sharing and we'll get to the project. So um, let's spotlight my hands, Lori. Okay. All right, so here's what we're making. It's a folding card and it's got a window cut out so that we can put our pleating on there. And the idea is you can, I can't really show you it lit up, but you could set it under a light or in a window and really see the pleating. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of different papers. So I folded that initial one in my handmade Abaca paper, which is this. Um, someone emailed me about using tracing paper. I think it's got a similar body. So you don't want anything too, too heavy. Although that guy I just showed you folds some, he folds arches rag, which is heavy. So, but we're going to do these skinny little pleats today. Um, this is a Kozo paper. It's a little heavier, very strong, holds, folds well. This, uh, this is Hanji, which is a Korean paper made from a similar fiber as Kozo, similar weight. However, you don't see the pleats quite as well. I made a pleat until it's illuminated. So with really translucent papers, you see the pleats even when it's not illuminated. So there's lots of subtle things about paper. And then I've got a piece of cardstock that I'll fold in half, cut my window in and uh, glue my, or tape my, my pleated paper into. Okay, we are gonna do a simplified version for the sake of time. So as I said, not quite as many pleats as this one, but it's gonna look great. Here's another one I folded just this morning. It's got fewer pleats in this direction, same number in this way. Um, so I've got my, all my materials. You may or may not need glue. I'm gonna talk about glues double-sided tape. I've got my cutting mat grid. Um, we're gonna start off cutting our translucent paper in half. Just hang on, I've got mine cut. Uh, eight and a half by 11, standard letter size, cardstock, ruler, metal or plastic. You're going to need a an awl. We're gonna score with an awl. If you have a scoring tool that's very fine, you can use that as well. But the awl works really well. I've got a little glue brush. I'm gonna do a gluing demo, but I don't think we will glue. It would take a long time. So this is unglued and uh, it's fine. I've got an X-Acto knife and a bone folder. Okay, so Lori, just tell me if anything pops into the chat. 
All right. Um, so let's get started and let's cut our uh, sheet of translucent paper in half. So cut it down from eight and a half by 11 or whatever it is. It's, this doesn't have to be exactly exact. We're gonna trim the finished thing, um, but I just cut it into two pieces. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. I'll give you a minute to do that. If for some reason you can't cut it in half, it's not a big deal. You can just pleat. We're just going to cut it down so it's kind of maybe wasting some paper, but you might be able to just have two pleated sections. Okay. Um, give me a thumbs up if you know how to use reactions, if you are ready. Okay, see, okay, they're popping up. Yay. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna do the pleating. And let me just show you a couple examples because we really are going to simplify. Mm -hmm. um, and not that these are simplified, but um, I just want to show you how they don't have to line up like you don't have to follow and do exactly what I'm doing. It's what I'm the point I'm trying to make. I'll tell you what I'm doing, but you can totally deviate. You can do diagonal lines. You can do lines close together. You can spread them apart. Here's a wider grid that I did. And this one's actually glued. I think you probably can tell the difference. This one's not glued. So you don't have to, um, there's no rules except pleating. Okay. So I'm going to line my piece up on my cutting mat and um, just so that it's at least at the top and the bottom, it's sort of on a line. I've got a cutting mat. This is a quilting cutting mat. So it has some dots and some lines. And I am gonna go for straight lines. So I'm gonna connect 11 to 11, et cetera. I'm gonna start in the center and move out because we will trim this. And um, I think we're gonna spend uh, 10 minutes max on the pleating. So, uh, so I might only do six pleats. So I actually like to work with a plastic ruler because I can see um, through it. And it's got nice, uh, I'm going to go eighth and use the eighth inch, but let me show you. So I'm lining this right up on the 11. So I'm starting, well, let me just start more centered. I'll start at the 10. It doesn't matter, just center-ish. And I'm going to use, this is an all, a beautiful all made by Shanna Leno. So it's got a really pointy tip and I am scoring with that. And it's gonna give me a really tight, fine line. And you, some papers could tear. So this is something you just have to learn. I'm gonna draw it just so you guys can see it too. Okay, so there's my line. Hopefully you can see it with this crazy cutting mat. And then I'm gonna move my ruler over and notice I started, I'm going to move to the right because now I have the, I can line up my grid of my ruler with that line I just made. And I'm going to score another line 
I'm doing one eighth inch. Now you can do wider. It there's no rules. Um, this makes a nice tight line like I've got in these, but you could do a quarter inch. Now, once you have those two lines, I want you to, we're gonna do a test pleat and then we'll start doing more. So I just, let me, let me, uh, sorry, let me draw my second line. Okay, you don't need to draw it again. I'm just doing that so you can see. And now this is a really, um, because I've done many pleats, this is really handy technique. Instead of trying to pleat all in one action, if you fold on the bottommost line like this, so down, I'm making a mountain, fold. Then I can unfold that and my paper is pleated enough that I can just pleat. So pleating is creating a zigzag. So this comes from sewing. So you see what it is? It's a, a like a letter Z. Okay, now Steph turned me onto this, well, onto ironing. So you're not gonna do this, but I wanna just show you this cool iron. Uh, Linda Marshall from Washi Art, she's here today too. She's the first person I saw use this particular iron. This is actually a Cricut. It's in the chat. And it's a really fun little iron. It comes with a stand. It's not that expensive. Maybe $30. I forgot to look. And um, it's just a cool, it hasn't quite warmed up because I just turned it on. But you can just kind of press your paper. Now, some papers, like if I did this, this is not my abaca, which tends to shrink. You, I would do a test before you iron any paper just to make sure it's not going to do something crazy. Okay, now, now we just want to get a few more same orientation. Let's just do two more because um, we have a lot to do. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just go a couple inches over. Again, it doesn't matter. This, the grids are going to all look different. It'll be interesting. So I'm going to do one to the right. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pleat one to the left. And I'm not even gonna do them the same distance apart. So, so when I say one, I'm doing that series of two, two score lines that are a eighth of an inch apart. Okay, so I see some questions. It looks like they've been answered. The iron is a cricket, and there's a link in the chat. Uh, I got it on Amazon. So now I'm going to score these. I fold these in the same direction. You could fold them in other directions, but let's try to fold them the same way. So my first fold, um, and I didn't draw it this time is down and then up. Um, folding these in the same direction is going to make the next step when I do some pleats in the other direction easier. Okay, now I'm showing how to do the folds again. So please look if you need to. I see someone put that in the chat. Let me... Uh, let me draw my lines. I think that'll help. Okay. So there's a question about using a bone folder instead of the awl. 
if you can, if you, if you, let me, let me rephrase it. Maybe it's asking about the actual folding using a bone folder, but there's Um, a question about difference between using. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I think, I think she means the difference between scoring. Mm -hmm. So the all just gives you a very precise line. And because I'm doing two lines so close together, that would be tricky with the bone folder. But if you can do that, more power to you. And if you have a skinny, I have this skinny bone folder, this probably would work. And it depends how you move your ruler. So, you know, there's a lot of variables and uh, yeah, try it. So the, the question actually was about the iron versus a bone folder. Oh, uh, the iron has heat. So it sets it a little better. Yeah, you can, you can bone fold. It's going to depend on the paper. With this paper, I don't really see a difference. So the bone folder folds that right down. Okay, so here's the pleating. So I'm gonna fold my bottom line first and I'm going to make a mountain fold. So I'm folding the paper down. This is what I call a mountain, looks like a mountain top. The next one is a valley because it's folding the other way. And I just hold the mountain like this and come down and it should kind of pop into that fold because I pre-scored it and be simple. Now, once you do this many times, it becomes much easier. Okay, so now I've got pleat, pleat, pleat. And... If you've got three pleats, I want you to put them in this orientation. So I flipped it over now. So my pleats are, because I'm going to score down over those pleats rather than scoring and hitting those pleats and maybe popping them open. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute to catch up. Which is the reaction that stays, Lori? Uh, it's the raised hand, not the thumbs up. Okay. So if you're done, if you would click on the raised hand, I'm just gonna. It should know. be like separately below the. Okay. The, I see a lot of them. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, someone's um, clapping. Thank you. So Helen, there's, there's been a, yeah. a lot of inf- questions about the all. And I put in the chat that Shauna it's Shauna Leno and that she was the guest speaker just a couple of weeks ago and that she's offering a discount to members through mm-hmm. September 30th, which is tomorrow. Um, and that all is at a glance pricey. Yeah. I bought one from her uh, six years ago and it is basically that my favorite tool I always have it on my desk at my fingertips I use it it's so great and I kept I saw her to show I kept wandering around trying to decide if I could justify paying for it and I finally did and I am so grateful that I have it that's my right. okay that's my testimony uh- Thank you. It's wonderful. And so Lori is what she's getting at is if you join today, you could access that discount. Um, If you can't find it, because sometimes when you first join, it's a little tricky to figure everything out. Please email me so that you get the discount code in time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, members, I know a lot of members have ordered. She makes beautiful tools. Uh, She makes bone folders. She makes all she makes uh lots and lots of things and there's a the recording of our meeting with her where she talks about making tools okay we're going to move on now we're going to um go we're going to make vertical lines i've turned my paper though and again i've turned it in a way that these folds so look at my fold how it is going (laughs) uh my pleat is like this hard to say what it what I'm I don't have words uh but these are pressing down towards the bottom the other way it's just going to be a little trickier to do the scoring not impossible though 
So now that we've got the pleats in there, our paper is not perfectly square unless you're like really good. Um, there's probably a little bit of a wiggle. So I don't, I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to do three pleats in this direction. So you can go ahead and score. Let's score the first one. Um, keep taking the wrong ruler. Okay. So let's, I'm going to start in the center ish. And I'm going to score down. So now because I have the pleats going that way, I'm scoring right over them rather than bumping into them. And then I'm gonna move my ruler one eighth of an inch, make my second score. I'm gonna draw those. Okay, now I want to do a little gluing demo. Um, uh, and in my book, Steph Roo, the instructions talk about gluing. And this is a great paste, Yamato. Uh, you can get this from Washi Arts. You can find it other places as well. Um, it's called sticking paste. It's a rice paste. And it doesn't show. You know how some glues, when you make a mistake, you see a blob? Well, this doesn't, which is amazing. Now, there's also something called Jin Shofu. These are all both in the chat. And this is wheat starch. So you can make wheat paste and rice paste. And wheat starch, um, you can make this yourself and mix it up. So it comes in powder form. The instructions are in my book, The Art of Paper Craft. And you can find them elsewhere too. And it's not hard. You do a simple um, microwave with water and it sets up really fast. And you only need a small amount. So um, this is very tedious. So we're not doing this today, but I just wanna show that I would put this glue on the seams that I've already pleated and it's invisible, so you can't see it. But I have a very tiny brush so that I'm not getting it where I don't want it, really. And I would glue these before I did the second set of folds because it'd be hard to get in there after. So now I just glue. And that is adhered. But remember, that's a Z. So really, if you do it, it's double the work. You got to go back and do the other side too. So this is why I'm saying this is very tedious aside from the pleating, which is tedious. But I find that doing the second set of folds that cross the first kind of hold things down. So you don't have to do the gluing. But I wanted to share this glue with you so you know about it. And uh, I think it in certain situations would be great. Um, and the Bojagi screen only has folds in one direction. So that's why they get glued because they would pop open like that. Okay. So that glue is listed in the resources. I love these little, these are little snack cups or condiment cups that you get a hundred of them for using glue because they have a lid. Okay, so now we're gonna do, it's a little trickier to fold the other way because you're folding across these pleats that are unglued. Um, if they were all glued, this would be simpler, but you can kind of just hold them together. And again, I'm always folding the bottom fold, the bottom fold to me first. So I'm going to actually flip this over on the table so I can kind of hold these pleats in position. And then it's the second fold, the bottom fold, sorry, um, that I'm folding. And now look at what happens because of these pleats, things kind of start going wonky, that's okay. And then I'll open that up, I'll set that down again. And then I'll do the same thing where I'm pinching 
just carefully pinching that folded. And then I'm gonna get that second fold that's right above and pleat it in the other direction. Okay, um, if anyone has to leave right at the top of the hour, I can tell this is gonna take us probably 10 minutes longer. So this is being recorded and you can come back if you need to see the rest. I'm gonna put in, uh, I'm just gonna put in one more pleat vertically. And then we're gonna move on to, and this one I'm just going to do a little diagonal for fun. Okay, I'm gonna orient that again. So my folds are going down. My iron is beeping. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. So you can do one or two more pleats. Now on the vertical, since I only have two, it might be interesting to fold it in the other direction. So this one is pleating with the opening on the left. I'm gonna pleat this one with, with the opening on the right, but you could totally have it the other way. So I will first fold the bottom most. You have to have pretty good eyes. Ooh. The bottom most fold. Rebecca says her Teflon bone folder works very well on the pleats. Is that for pressing them or scoring? Glad to hear it. Since I have my iron, I'm just gonna use it. Helen? Yeah. Um Linda Marshall has just very graciously offered a discount code to paper your members for Washi Arts purpose purchases. Oh. And, and Washi is in the links um, for uh, the rice paper glue adhesive, um, but uh, they Washi carries a whole line of tools, papers, everything. So for the membership, there is a special discount. Wonderful. So um, how do people get that? Let's see. Um, well, I will give it to you. Okay. And then- I you... will post it in the classroom. Right, because it's for members. Right. Mm -hmm. So where am I gonna post it? If anybody wants to use it, well, I send a Monday email. So I'll put it in my Monday email. Okay, so you'll get it in my email on Monday. Um, thanks, Linda. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anne says she used her narrow glue spatula. Uh, maybe it's a micro spatula, wonderful, to scrape off a scrap of glue from the glue stick to attach the folds before scoring perpendicularly. Um, yeah, great idea for removing glue. Okay, um, how about give me another raised hand if you are ready to move on. Mindy says tracing paper is not working well. Okay, sorry about that. There's different kinds of tracing paper. Uh, Mindy emailed me this morning, so apologies. You could just do a model in just regular copy paper. Mm -hmm. okay so now okay a lot of people are ready I'm going to move on um, next thing I'm going to do is prepare my card that I'm going to attach this to so this is just a uh, regular card stock I didn't put French paper in the chat, but I like French paper. They have 
um, lots of fun colors from bright to more earthy in a variety of weights, also in packs of eight and a half by 11. And they've started a new thing where they are selling, because you used to have to buy like 50 sheets was the minimum of one color. Now they're giving packs of their lines. So I saw recently they have a paper called Parch Tone. It comes in about five colors. So you, you could get 10 sheets of five colors. So you would really be able to explore that line. Okay, so I'm gonna just score with a bone folder now. So an all sometimes etches into paper. I don't want that. So um, I'm gonna score this in the middle and fold it in half. Now, obviously you could make the this card any size. I'm just doing this for simplicity's sake, not cutting it down. And you could do a lot more planning. So I'm gonna trim this down, um, but depending on how many pleats you did, your paper size is gonna be a little different than mine. So first we're going to create our opening. And um, I recommend you just do what I do. And then the next card you make, you can do some variations. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my ruler, which is an inch and a half wide, and go from the fold. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle before I cut it. And then I'm going to line this up with every edge to create my window shape. So that is a half, one and a half inches. If you want to measure and mark it, you could do that. Um, I think, yeah, if you have a skinnier ruler, I would, I, I would go for one and a half inches. Use your cutting mat as your grid, because if you start getting too close to the edge, your paper's going to lose some of its stiffness when you cut this window out. So I don't recommend going much smaller for the frame. Like I was gonna say, you could just do an inch, but I would try to do what I'm doing here. Um, and that certainly would be simple, just moving this around on my cutting mat and measuring one and a half inches which I know we have people who speak centimeters and look, this ruler is so dumb. It's upside down, the centimeters. So it's about four, four and a half centimeters, maybe five. Yeah, five centimeters. So once I've got that drawn, I will just cut it. Now notice I put it on the inside. That's just so my pencil lines aren't the outside of my card. And this will be, it could be on either side because this is totally symmetrical, but this will be the front. So now I will just take my knife and cut out that window. Okay. So someone has tracing paper that is working. Um, pressing with the iron works great. Deli wrap, lots of different comments. So yes, Mindy says maybe she's pressing with the all too hard. I had that when I started where I was tearing the paper. So that could be, um, is the pleated paper folded over two ply? Well, it's actually three, no two. Yeah, you're right. No, it's three layers, sorry. So see, one, two, three. So I don't know what you mean by two ply, but it's three layers of paper, two folds. Um, Yasutomo paper. Laurel is using Yasutomo paper, it's working great. Where did you get that, Laurel?
She says maybe Blick. Okay, great. Um, if anybody has any questions and has to leave, please type them in the chat. Somebody else got it at Hyatt's. Okay. Uh, Molly, sorry. Heather's asking for the total dimension of the re rectangle again. Okay, I'll tell you the rectangle dimension, but I think it's easier if you just go five centimeters all around from the edge or two, one and a half inches. And then what ends up being the rectangle? See, it's not an exact five and three eighths by two and three eighths. So, uh, so a window centered within the with with a one and a half inch frame all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could really you could have any shape in there and any window size. Um okay, so you where do you order French paper? You actually get it from the company. French paper. I'm pretty sure it's dot com. Check it out and they have lots of papers. And they do sell larger sizes. Like if you print on uh, you know, commercial printing, they sell they they are a big paper company. And they're make they make their paper in the US, which is cool. One of the few. And family owned. Nice company. Okay, so if you're done, this is the next thing is I'm going to kind of determine where, what part of my image or what part of my pleated paper do I want in here and um, here's a you see this one I glued it on the outside because I wanted to see everything and this is what the inside looks like you can also glue it on the inside and it it would just look the opposite I'm I think I'm gonna tape mine on the inside today uh, because I did if anybody's fast and wants to just do this um, I, I folded over the edges on this one. So they look nice and finished, but I trimmed it first. So, um, let's see, give me a raised hand, your hands again. Let's see if a lot of people are ready to move on. I'm going to do it. So they all come to the front. It looks like the first slide when people raise their hand. Yeah. Okay, I'll just give you another couple of seconds. Got some black thing on my paper. Oh. Yay. Now I'm always thinking when I'm doing something about ways to perfect the design. So uh, wherever you're at, let's stop and take a look um, so you can see where we're going. So I just had this idea, well, I wouldn't need to trim this if I covered the back. Um, however, <laughs> so now as I'm telling you that, I thought of a problem with this. So you could have another flap that folded over, but that would cover your window, right? So it would need to have a window in it too. So never mind. But I'm sure you guys think about things like that. Mm -hmm. Helen, there's yeah. a, a, um Gail is asking you to explain how your diagonal manages to line up with the pleats it is crossing. Uh hers are slightly displaced and there must be a technical solution that I don't understand. Um, 
I'd have to look at yours, Gail. Uh, maybe at the end I can do that. Mine's not lining up exactly. There's a little shift. So I think it depends on the angle. So it's definitely moved up a little bit. And as long as you have it pleated, now we're gonna trim it. So as long as your paper's flat, I don't think it matters. Um, yeah, my diagonal's a bit off. So someone else said that too. So you're not the only one. Oh, look at this. Someone, Leanne shared her picture in the chat. Look beautiful. Leanne's been busy. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. So let's get moving. So I'm going to place mine here. Uh, one one last oh, yeah. question. Is it too late to add an extra horizontal pleat once the verticals have been folded? No, your folding sequence is just different, but you can do it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to place my window over my pleated piece and I'm going to look and just move it around till I find what I want. Now I have to have extra for gluing. So I'm just going to take a pencil and make a little corner mark in all four corners. And I will erase this later. So I'm actually making an, uh, an angle. So I'm marking both the top and the side. So you can see that hopefully. Uh, let me change my view. So, so I've got a little, well, down here it's an L, and then these are just different shapes. And that's going to be easy with my ruler that I can see through. I'm going to uh, do about a half inch, um, anywhere from a quarter to a half inch. I've lined that right up on those and I'm going to cut this. Now, if you don't want to do this cutting, you could just stick your whole piece on the inside. You know, mine fit, I could tell. And I'm just going to go around. Don't forget to add, I almost cut right on those lines. Here's a question. Do, yes. the score, do the score lines have to be parallel? No. See, mine, I've got one that's diagonal. But, so but the diagonal line. Oh, the two score lines. Um, today they do, but no. I'm sure you can change. You can vary that. Uh, I'm not sure about at the eighth inch scale. That'd be a little tricky. But then, then you could accentuate... Um, yeah, all the that uh, how the diagonals aren't exactly lining up would be accentuated, and all kinds of things would start to happen. The edges of your paper um, would fan out. So there's so much to explore with paper pleating. This is just the tip of the iceberg, <laughs> and this is what I really try in the paper year to show a technique that then could be taken in multiple ways. And it's really fun to see how people do that. Okay, so now I've got that. And again, you can mount it on the front or the back. And I've got those little guidelines still. So that will help me with attaching. And then I can erase. So, yeah, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it inside this time. So you can see how this one I attached on the top. This one I'm going to put inside. Let me raise this up a little. And I'm going to use the double-sided tape for this. You can use glue. Um, you just want to be... Um, careful with the glue, maybe have a piece of scrap paper underneath 
and not use too much that it and um, just put it on the edge all around. The nice thing about tape is that you can work one at a time. That would be a little trickier with glue. So I'm just, I've got quarter inch tape, but I gave myself a half inch border. Um, and I'm gonna put all the tape on all the way around. And trim it. I think I got this from Washi Arts too. This is a... Yes, it's Suk Wing tape. Yeah, and you have it in several widths, I believe. Yes, from like eighth inch up to five inches. Now, I know Betty is here or was here. She was just in another class with me, and she turned us on to... Oh, my gosh. Are you here, Betty? Score? Um, I am here, and it is score tape. Score tape. And you can tear it. So that's kind of a cool thing. Because sometimes you have, you're putting tape on and it's really awkward to get your scissors and cut it. So you can tear it. That that looks like the score tape that I use. That looks no, like no, score no, this, tape. This is not score tape. Okay. It, it is the same thing, Helen. You can work oh. with your fingers. They've just rebranded it um, oh. for their own marketing. Um, as score tape, but it's Suk Wayne tape. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even try it. That's the I was stuff just I've been talking about. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. So, putting two and two together. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So I've just lined my, I am keep making frames, right? I've got the frame here. I've got my little gridded frames. Another fun thing I've thought is with these pleats, you could slip something in there, like another piece of paper or pleats have a lot of possibilities. So now I'm going to remove the backing. Um, Linda Marshall, by the way, was one of our guest suppliers several months ago. So the recording of that is in the classroom and she talked about all her papers and products. So now I'm going to use those little corners that I drew to set this down. Well, and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do very well. So you can't look at the back of mine. Uh, I'm off a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look terrible until it's illuminated from the back, but I would be looking at it from the front. So that's, so that is the pleated paper card. Um, oh, I was pretty good. 10 minutes over, eight minutes over. Um, does anybody have one they can share? Okay, Carol, let's uh, spotlight a few people. Okay. Carol, uh, Paul. Lane. Okay. Gonna do a Lori's going to do it. See her. Um, okay. Elaine Chu. Do you want to unmute? I made a frame on the inside so it looks more finished. Oh, so you made two frames. Made two frames. Yeah, I smart. Cut them separately, but I'm um, thinking back, I could cut them at the same time, but it worked. <laughs> you could fold it and cut through both. Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Thanks, Elaine. What paper did you use? Oh, it's just, uh, I mean, the, uh, oh my gosh, I think it's Hanji paper that I had used to make your lantern from a couple of paper years ago. And okay. I did watercolor. Oh, yeah. Strokes on. Thank you. Okay. Mary Rodas. Okay. Well, I don't know if you can oh. see it. Yeah. Well, it's hard to see the backlighting, but we get the idea. You got a diagonal in there. Yeah, yeah, I put strings underneath. I loved your idea of putting things in the, the creases. So I was off. Oh, yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Um, Thanks, Mary. Yep. Uh, Annette Plummer. You're muted, Annette. There you uh, go. Okay, yeah. Um, I wasn't going to show anything. I didn't realize I had my hand up still. Oh, oh. sorry. Sorry. It's okay. okay. Um, I've just used origami paper. Oh yeah. Um, the square one, but then I started playing with the diagonal lines. 
Yeah, so yeah. beautiful. I think that yeah. would have to be stuck onto the front of something rather than actually yeah. behind anything. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Gail. Yeah, I think we have a lot of raised hands from before. Oh, Gail's camera is off. Um, yeah, those raised hands are from answering. Oh, sorry, questions. sorry. Um, uh, Laurel Rogers. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Laurel? I was still working on mine. That was my old raised hand. Oh, here, God. Uh, um, go. Look for people holding it up. Liz has hers. Liz, TV at Dale. Okay. Um, oh. Sorry, Laurel, to cut you off. <laughs> it's okay. I'm 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 just gonna go across my screen and make the next one. That's Carol Hull. Okay. And then Mindy will be next after Carol. Uh Carol's muted. You're okay. muted. Carol. Um you can oh. just hold it up if you can't. There you go. Oh, you clicked it back on. Oh god. Uh, nice. well that's a beautiful sequence of yeah. pleats with the one diagonal nice thank you um mindy and you want to unmute yourself i'm unmuted hi okay so um i had this yeah. card stock that i bought i didn't know what to do with you know it was on sale <laughs> uh -huh. um it's kind of gold bronzy. So anyway, this is the first time I'm using it. And I couldn't help myself with the diagonals, even though you said, you know, kind of don't do that. Uh, um, it looks great. Um, but what was really great is because it ripped. So I actually had to then cut it in half again. And that's all right. You know, it's fine. And it's really interesting. And thank you so much. And I love that idea since it's really a mess on the inside. Um, I love that idea of covering it up. So whoever shared that, thank you. Yeah, and it actually could just be an artwork. You could laminate the two together. You 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 wouldn't have the window, or you could cut a window and then hide the back inside. Yeah. And Mindy's gonna be a guest artist next year teaching some paper out. cutting. Yeah. Okay, let's do three Lee, more. Okay, Lee Yardley next. Hi. I just I even though we did straight lines for right. our things, I I decided to place it on there as diagonally so that I could oh yeah because I like to look diagonally. Um, my inside's a little messy, but I, it was a first first attempt. Oh so yeah, I'm having fun. Wonderful, yeah. And I always recommend making models first. So this is a model. You can't like get everything perfect the first time. I can't. I've done this several times. So thank you. <laughs> and I love that twisting. Wonderful. Okay, uh, Liz is going to be next, and uh, after that, Sue Reynolds will be the third. Beautiful. I didn't oh. get so far as to cut my window, but I have a plan. <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful. Oh, I it's love handmade that. Hanji. Yeah. Did you make it? Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks, Liz. Sure. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Sue, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Let me find you. Uh, uh, oh, someone is in the waiting room. Was it oh, Susan here we go. Stewart? No, no, sorry. <laughs> the, the, she keeps popping around and I keep finding, oh, there we go. Sue, I'm going to, oh God. Okay, there. Okay. Sue. <laughs> oh, how colorful. Yeah, um, I made a mistake and cut my things too. My frame was too wasn't wasn't large enough so that I couldn't glue it at the bottom. But um, oh, okay. I used Hanji, which folded really nicely. Oh, good. Um, then I was in the process of putting little tiny pieces of tape to hold my pleats down, which yeah. worked well. Okay. So. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So it was a fun project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, some people are posting their images in the chat. That's really fun. Linda Marshall. Um, someone put washi tape on the inside raw edges. Great. See, this is what happens. People have more ideas to share. Um, lots of things to add to what I introduce. I love that. I'm your guide. Um, and you guys take and run with it. 
thanks so much for coming. If anybody has any last questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, um, there was a, a good request a little bit ago in the chat to me directly um, for everyone to save the chat. Um, if you have the chat open on the bottom of the screen, there are three little dots. And there's, if you click on those, you get an option to save chat. And um, it the computer will create a folder called Zoom and the chat will be in a text file inside of that. Um, people are asking about the alls. They're very excited about the alls. I put the link of uh, Sarah Leno uh, into the chat um, included with the other links. I'm gonna drop it in one more time so you can go- I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say they're 60 to $75. Somebody's asking about the ballpark it, price. Somebody somebody spotted that they were 58, but remember oh, 58. she's and offering you, a discount through right. tomorrow if you're a member of paper year. So, um, so that just so you're not disappointed, the discount is I think 15%, but you have to spend $60. So okay. if you just want the all, you're not going to reach it. Um, she has a couple things that are $10. So there you go. Her stuff is amazing and yes. beautiful yes. and it's handmade. So she's, she's amazing. Um, if, you, if you didn't get the chat, I do send that. I'm sending you the recording. I will send the chat with the recording. So don't sweat it if you're not able to. Um, so all's for beginners. So if you look for a pottery needle, it's just a, it's a really simple tool, probably $5. Or you can take a needle, if you have a cork from a bottle of wine, put it into the cork and that makes an all. So you can make your own. That's in the art of paper craft. Okay. okay. Jean says, thank you. She sees birthday cards for friends. Yay. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, I'll be sending the recording later on. And I hope some of you will join us in the paper year. And thanks to current members who showed up today. There are a lot of you here. Bye, Helen. Okay, let's stop the recording. Bye.